Why is it important to wear your glasses when you do math? Because they help with the vision. Get it? All right, we're going to do lesson 7-9, paper folding. We're just doing, uh, a lot of you have done origami, and we're just going to do some basic paper folding to take another look at fractions. And if you don't have origami paper, or you don't have any square pieces of paper, that is okay. You can easily turn a regular piece of paper into a square piece of paper by just folding it over like that, and then cutting off this bottom section. Now, voila, I have a square. So, first thing it asks us to do is fold a square people on a piece of paper in half diagonally, which, thanks to what I just did, I've already done. And then, open it up, take a look, and what part of the square is each triangle? Well, I've got two equal parts, so each triangle is one half of the square. Then go ahead and fold it in half again. And when you unfold it, take a look. Now how much of the whole square is each triangle? Now I've got four smaller triangles. So one square broken up into four equal parts. Each part is one fourth. So then it asks us to fold it a third time and you can probably predict what's gonna happen. When we folded it once, we ended up with two equal parts. When we folded it a second time, we doubled that. So what's gonna happen when we fold it a third time? Fold it, make a crease, open it up, and count the squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight equal pieces, just as I suspected. Twice as many as I had last time. So now if I've got eight equal pieces, what fraction is each triangle? Each triangle is one eighth of the square. And how do you know that the eight parts have the same area when you put them all together as the four parts did, or the two parts did, or the whole piece of paper did? Well, we know that because have we changed the dimensions of this piece of paper at all? No, we haven't. This piece of paper has the same area that it had when I started, before I had folded it at all, it has the same area. And all I've done is folded it and made that same area, broken it into different size pieces. But when you put all the pieces back together, <clears throat> you end up with the same size piece of paper. So the area has not changed at all. Um, and number five, you can go ahead and skip because I'll tell you what I'm not really sure about. I mean, we can take a look at it. I'm just saying don't drive yourself crazy over it because I'm actually not 100% sure what they're getting at. If you fold all of the corners into the center, you make this smaller square. And it asks you how much of the whole square is each of these triangles. And I'm not sure what they're talking about when they say the whole square. Are they talking about this smaller square that I just made, in which case each piece is one fourth, or are they still talking about the big square when I unfold it all together, in which case each one of these is one eighth of the whole square. So I'm not sure which they mean. So if you're not sure either, don't worry too much about it. On the other side, we're going to be folding paper and it's we're going to be folding it in half three times and you can fold it in half this way like we just did and as you know then we'll be making triangles you could also fold it in half this way and then again like this, and then a third time, a really long skinny one like this, and now we've made rectangles. So depending on if you do this, or one, 
two, three, this, you're going to end up either with triangles or rectangles. But either way, you end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight equal pieces, whether they're long, skinny rectangles or triangles. And then they ask you to pick three colors and to color in the rectangles. Um, color every other rectangle or triangle one color color the other rectangles or triangles the second color. Oh, two colors. I don't know why I thought three. I'm not going to use the pink. I'm going to use yellow and blue. And I am not going to spend too much time trying to do this beautifully. I'm just going to get it done. And actually, if you think about it, you don't even really need a second color because your second paper color can be white. I can have white and blue stripes. And that's going to save me a little bit of time. I don't have to make all my yellow stripes. Okay, so let's see. Did I do that right? I'm going to reread the directions. Choose two different colors. Color every other rectangle or triangle one color. Color the other rectangles or triangles the second color. So I'm just going to say my second color is white. So I've got blue and white stripes. And then write three equivalent fractions for the part of the square that is colored the same color. So let's think about this. One, two, three, four out of. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've got four eighths of my square colored blue and four eighths of my square is left white. And so what we need to do is find three equivalent fractions for four eighths. So take your fraction bars and build four eighths and then find two other fractions that have different denominators. <clears throat> that are the same length. And then you can write it as an equivalence chain. All right, and then what do you think is going to happen if I fold this piece of paper a fourth time? What's going to happen? I bet you can predict because every time we fold the paper, we seem to double the amount of pieces we have. So I'll bet you can predict what would happen if I folded this paper a fourth time. Okay, that is it for lesson 7 9.